kind of Muslim. Really, really good stop here. Let's get into the game. The map is Daybreak. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have spawning in the bottom left position one of the UK's strongest Terran players. We have, ladies and gentlemen, none other than Lau. And his opponent, oh, by the way, coolest decal ever on that command center. Make sure you make a note of that. The wild boar. If it's not a wild boar, I apologize in advance. It's probably a zergling and someone's about to correct me. But the wild boar is friggin' awesome. And his opponent, a regular at DreamHack tournaments, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is no slouch at all. He might not have won that many. But my goodness, is he a regular. And he plays against some of the best people on the planet. Such a talented Terran player. Let's see if he can pull one out here in this crucial best of one stage. It is... Props Bobson. So a pretty awesome TVT to start us off with. We note uh, nothing too much out of the ordinary is happening until right about now where we have Lau going to be grabbing his gas first. So we have an early gas coming out from Lau very, very early on here. Let's see what he chooses to transition into. Is he going to be going for ridiculously quick Hellion play, for example? Does he just want to get his siege tanks in siege mode out very early? Could we be seeing something absolutely fun and outrageous, like tacking super quick to Banshees? All of these options are possible when you go that gas first. And it also means, of course, that when your barracks finishes, uh, you'll have that 100 gas ready for a factory, which we will show you in just a moment. Lau, looking like he wants to harass the SCV, building that barracks, but another one gets sent down almost immediately. Shouldn't suffer too much in the way of damage. You might actually have to move that SCV back. It's down to five hit points, and Lau is going to be able to chase that around. The barracks will complete, though, and uh, Lau is currently on a warpath. Will he get it? No, he has two SCVs repairing. And, oh, very nice micro there, and Lau's SCV is down to five hit points. Could we see a surround here? This SCV is trying to stop him from getting out, and is he going to be able to? Oh, it doesn't look like it, I'm afraid. Even the depot going down to add insult to injury, and Lau is not done yet. He wants to try and take out this SCV. <laughs> it looks like the SCV wants a piece of the action as well, but a Marine is going to make short work of that poor little guy. Wow, he worked so unbelievably hard, but at the end of the day... That's what you get, a shot to the head, ladies and gentlemen. Don't poke around too much. We have Bobson in the meantime, scouting everything that Lau has done as well. Presumably, if he saw the refinery here and clicked on and saw how much was mined, he might be able to deduce it was a gas first opening as well. The factory going down and a tech lab on the barracks. So we could just be seeing ultra fast stim, potentially swapping him around for really, really quick siege mode as well. That's not out of the question here. But uh, we could just be seeing quick stim. Let's find out what he decides to do. And oh yes, yeah, so he lifts it. So we are going to be seeing quick siege mode. And the SCV scout from Bobson did die before the barracks lifted. And no, we're not going to be seeing quick siege mode. Pardon me. And this is what's so great about gas first builds. You can basically do anything you want with them. We are going to be going for that quick banshee. So, uh, oh, it could also... No, it has to be a Banshee with the Tech Lab there. I was going to suggest it could be Marine Hellion Drops, but of course, with the Tech Lab, that would make that a rather inefficient build indeed. In the meantime, we have a Command Center at the Natural going down for Bobson now. So playing the longer game, Lao Note is still only on a single base. So he has to do a decent amount of damage with this attack. It looks like he's just going to be going all out with these units off of one base. And I guess you could kind of call it an all-in. Because if the attack doesn't work, then he's on one base versus Bobson's two. But at the same time, if he manages not to kill Bobson off but do an incredible amount of damage, then the game still continues. And even though the attack failed ultimately, he's still going to be able to bring it through at the end of the day. Even sending an SCV there to repel the Hellion. Uh, repel? Repair even the Hellion at the Watchtower. In the meantime, bunker going up for Bobson, so not too much to be worried about so far. We have got the factory immediately being lifted up and going onto that reactor, so it looks like Bobson is choosing Hellions at the moment as his order of the day, while his starport goes down as well. Uh, getting those units into the bunker, of course, trying to make sure there aren't any run-bys into Mineral Line. Lau almost immediately coming in with two Hellions and then getting repelled as soon as he sees that bunker go down. 
in the meantime, just continuing to pump units but actually and gathering at the Watchtower. We have the first uh, Banshee going to be moving in towards the back of the Mineral Line in the main base of Bobson at the moment. Let's see what he ends up doing there. We Oh, very nice. Picking off the SCV that was building the refinery as well uh, to try and delay that gas as much as possible. We have the Banshee now trying to kite a couple of Marines, actually doing a great job. Those Marines, of course, don't have combat shields, so it only takes two shots rather than three to kill them. And that's a lot of Marines, actually, that this Banshee has gotten so far, up to a total of seven kills. But only one, uh, only a couple of those kills actually are SCVs. So a lot of Marines going down there for Bobson. And uh, he's actually pulling a couple at the moment just in case he needs to repair the bunker because only a single Marine is left in here. Potentially, Lau could move up here right now. Uh, how many? Let me see. He's got a decent number of Hellions, not too many Marines at the moment, and a Banshee being repaired. We have a second one now looking to move into the main base. And now... Lao opts to put down his natural expansion. What is the worker count looking like between these guys? 28 to 33 in favor of Bobson. So Bobson isn't leading in workers by much indeed. And Lao does have a pretty frightening army bearing down on the base. The micro on that bench earlier was just pretty darn good indeed. And it looks like a Viking's now out for Bobson. So Lao is going to opt to keep these Vi uh, to keep these banshees rather with the army for the foreseeable future. Let's see what else is going down here. We have a tech lab going down on the barracks now in the main base of Bobson. And whoa, that's a lot of SCVs being pulled to defend. So clearly he thinks this is a uh, very much an all or nothing situation here. We've got four Marines now back in this back. Oh, pardon me, three Marines and an SCV. That's not going to do him too much good at all. Now the three Banshees just able to absolutely wreak havoc. They do need to get under the protective cover of those Marines though. Because otherwise this lone Viking will just be able to do so much damage down to about half health is that Viking and the income tab at the moment is going to tell the story. Bobson just isn't really mining while Lau is sieging his base up. Uh, no siege tanks, of course, so... Uh, but uh, he has a decent composition to try and break through here. He is making another starport by the looks of things. So he is presumably wanting to add more Banshees to this composition, picking off SCVs that are surrounding that bunker right now. Lau ideally could use maybe a medevac to drop some marines on the high ground so that the marines can cover and fend away the vikings while the banshees get to work, but he doesn't really have that at the moment. So these banshees are stuck with having to follow the army around. Uh, in the meantime, another volley off of a couple of vikings now, and Lau is, uh, there we go actually, he has two uh, vikings on the way, so it looks like he's just wanting to outproduce his opponent right now. Moving back to the watchtower actually, which isn't too unsensible a move, just in case Bobson for example pops out with tanks or something at a timing that would be rather unfortunate to him, but it doesn't look like that's happening at the moment. We're actually going for stim, and we're going for another barracks on that reactor at the front of the base. So Bobson going to be electing to go for a, a biocentric composition off of the end of this, and is one of the banshees going to go down? Yes it is! So Lau losing a Banshee, he's actually gone back in the supply deficit just for a brief moment. Both players on about 70 supply as it currently stands, but three Vikings at a time now coming out for Lau. So his plan is to get air superiority, and once he gets that, he should be able to barrel through with the army uh, down the front door after the Banshees pick apart a couple of units at the front of the base. This is basically his plan right now, and it might end up working. How many Vikings do we have in the air? Three apiece at the moment, with Lau's production effectively going through the roof, but we do have Siege Mode coming down for both players now. So if Bobson can get Siege Mode and sort of move some tanks uh, somewhere vaguely useful in terms of defending his base, that's going to make it slightly more difficult for Lau, because he really just wants to make sure that, uh, oh wow, a Banshee killing a Viking, not something you see every day. Lau really just wants to make sure that he can kill ideally before his position gets too entrenched, and that's exactly what Siege Tanks are able to help with. We have got some Vikings landing with the Banshees in the main base of Bobson as well, and I think this is actually a huge move here, and uh, this is going to be prompting Bobson to move out into the middle of the map, but Lau's just going to run away. I think he knows that as long as he runs, this is doing so, so much damage in the main base that it might actually be enough to win the game. Bobson currently down to a 60 supply versus Lau's 85. 38 workers have been killed in total in this game. There are still, a, uh, I would say, a tasty number of workers left in the natural mineral line, but Bobson opting not to just go 100% attack and leading the units to come back home. There aren't actually that many Marines out with his composition, though. I think if Lau focuses the Marines down, Bobson might have to be a little bit careful here. How many are still out on the field for 
Bobson, only two Marines, and I think this might be very difficult indeed. Bobson now electing to move straight out into the middle of the map. We have three Vikings landed next to the barracks as well, able to stop Marines from coming out of them, and these Banshees are just doing oh so much damage. Lau still has air superiority. He's moving out across the map is Bobson with a whole bunch of Hellions, but Lau is going to be prepared. He has some Hellions of his own and three landed Vikings, interestingly. Let's see what this is going to do, because we know Lau is definitely going to be killing a whole bunch of workers in Bobson's space, and oh no, four more Hellions pop up, so that is not going to be a, uh, a battle that Bobson can win in Lau. Continuing with the Vikings in the base now, pulling all of the SCVs, and Lau still making sure he has the maximum number of units. The Banshees look like they do actually get picked off here, but Lau still has air superiority as Bobson moves back to base. The current supplies are 97 to 48. And the work supply is now 50 to 23 in Lau's favor. So it looks like that harassment more than paid off, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Lau should be in a good position to win the game from this point. But don't forget, the game is not won yet. He still has to wait until his opponent gives up. And Lau still has yet to deliver a killing blow. Bobson, in the meantime, going to be going up for an additional four barracks in his main base. It looks like one of them just got cancelled there. Needs to finish this one off as well, so he just wants to scramble to get enough units to hold this off and hope that maybe a counterattack might be able to reduce some of the economy from Lao long enough that he can get back into this game. He does have Siege Mode out now, so he might be able to hold off an attack at the front for a little bit, but the problem is these Vikings in the back are just going to be able to do so much annoying damage. I'm surprised he's not actually walking them straight into the mineral line. That's exactly what he's going to do now. Could have had a couple more seconds there, and here we go. More and more SCPs going down here. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Even ignoring the Marines for now, just wanting to kill off as many workers as he possibly can. The number of workers killed has gone up to 71 in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Lau has no problem with sacrificing these Vikings. He knows that uh, he is doing more than crippling damage to his opponent right now because the worker kill is now 60 to 14 and we even have buildings that are still half finished there just aren't enough SCVs to go around in Bobson's base Lau is whittling him down bit by bit and uh, no pun intended there because this isn't really what uh, what we see a third base of course coming out of Lau so uh, not quite one base all in of course and uh, he's he's just performing so so well with this harass especially with the Vikings he just got air superiority and kept it there. There wasn't too much Bobson can do about it because he got a decent number of Marines, but as soon as he lost that first battle, that allowed Lau's uh, Banshees just to come in and do oh, oh so much damage, especially when he kited those Marines as well. Without combat shields, of course, two hits to die instead of three, and then started picking away at the SCVs. There just really wasn't too much of a hope from Bobson from that point, aside from maybe a big engagement where Lau walks into siege tanks and loses his whole army, for instance could put Bobson in a position where he at least survives another five minutes and see what happens. But Lau is looking like in a position where he is considering the potential 1A maneuver now. Going to be sieging up just outside the range of those tanks. We could potentially see a scan come down shortly and have a little bit of a brief tank war. But Lau now taking his fourth base in the middle location as well. And here we go, the tanks coming down. Moving in with the Hellions, bizarrely. And no, it looks like we're not going to be doing any half-hearted like that. Trying to pick up a couple of the Marines with that tank fire. Able to successfully do so, actually. This Banshee worth its weight in gold. There's just not too much Bobson can do because if the Marines come any closer, the tanks actually start killing them off. So it looks like this siege tank is going to go down. And with that, I think Lau might just be able to walk straight in. A scan goes down from Bobson on the army from Lau. And I think at this point, he knows how hopeless the situation is. Vikings in the main base just checking out exactly what's being produced as well. Lau perfectly happy to sit here and tear away at those production facilities uh, for now. He doesn't really want to move in just yet while there are still targets on the ground. Moving in with some Hellions at the natural expansion now as well. And the number of workers is 11, ladies and gentlemen, to the 81 of Lau. Workers killed 94, so potential for triple digits in this game. Good luck in the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Bobson gives the GG, and Lau is going to be moving on to the best of threes. All right, so that was uh, that was a pretty good example of uh, early game harassment followed up with harassment with a side order of harassment and dessert harassment working out very, very well in Lau's favor there. The Vikings as well, a good choice to go for those earlier starports and just getting that Viking production up to try and make sure he had that air dominance over his opponent. That meant that the two Banshees he had earlier were just able to absolutely mop up and do boatloads of damage. And from there, it was very difficult for Bobson to come back because Lau was able to continuously produce more of those air units while just simply teching up to other stuff. And Bobson was trying to use his own income uh, just to get scramble out some marines try and scramble out some hellions eventually got siege mode as well but it didn't matter because the numbers were against him by that point so really well played there from lao 
very methodical, uh, picking his opponent apart left, right, and center to allow himself an easy end game. But that wasn't an easy opponent. Bobson is a very, very strong European GM Terran player, so it's great uh, that Lau can move on here. Also unfortunate that Bobson has bowed out of the tournament this early. Uh, but c'est la vie. That looks like that's how the brackets went. We'll see what game we get into next, ladies and gentlemen, because, of course, from round two onwards, all of the games are now best of threes with the two finalists. The final won't actually be played. We're just getting to the final two, uh, getting that lovely accommodation, payment towards travel, prize money, and all that good stuff to I-47 ESET UK Masters. So for now, guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, the best of threes.